In 1969, Stuart Kaufman proposed using random Boolean networks as an abstract model of gene regulatory networks, where each vertex or node represents a gene and on a state of a vertex indicates that the gene is expressed. A link from one vertex to another implies the former gene regulates the later, and zero or one values on edges indicate presence or absence of activating or repressing proteins. Boolean function assigned to nodes represent the rules of regulatory interaction between genes. Let's consider a three gene system. It's a discrete dynamical system, so we need a state variables and a set of rules. It's three gene network, so we have three state variables, x, y, z. We need also to know what will be the states of each of these nodes in the next time step, and we do that using the rules. For example, the states of node x at time t plus 1 depends on the states of node y at previous time step and node x itself at previous time step. If both of them are on, then the x is staying on. Using these rules, we can calculate all possible transient states for the given network. We can demonstrate all attractor and their basins of attraction using a graph called a state transition graph, or STG. So uh, we can see that the number of accessible states is finite, 2 power n, and cyclic trajectories are possible. But we need to keep in mind that not every state must be approachable from every other state. And the successor state is unique but the predecessor state is not unique. So, as we said, for a Boolean network, we need both rules and a structure. So, if we start with a set of nodes, then we need to connect them randomly to have a random network. But then, if the rules for updating states is also unknown, we need to select the rules randomly. So suppose that the Boolean function are assigned to a random Boolean network's uh, vertices so that they evaluate to 0 with the probability of p and evaluate to 1 with probability 1 minus p. For example, uh, p equals uh, 0 0.5 means that the Boolean function are assigned independently and uniformly at random from the set of 16 Boolean functions of two variables. So uh, let's look at uh, the definition of NK automata. NK automata is an autonomous random network of N Boolean logic elements. Each element has K inputs and one output. The signals at inputs and outputs take only binary values, 0, 1. The Boolean elements of the network and the connection between elements are chosen in a random manner. There are no external inputs to the networks and the number of elements n is assumed uh, large. An automaton operates in discrete time. The set of the output signals of the Boolean elements at a given moment of a time characterize the current states of an automaton. During an automaton operation, the sequence of states converge to a cyclic attractor. The state of an attractor can be considered as a program of an automaton operation. The number of attractor, m, and the typical attractor length, l, are important characteristics of NK automaton. So, uh, with k connection, there is 2 power 2 power k Boolean input functions, which we need to select. Uh, we need to keep in mind that these networks are free of external inputs. And once connections and rules are selected, they remain constant. And the time evolution is deterministic.
if we use a Boolean network as the model of organisms, then we can have a different network for every organism. And we can think about the questions such as, what is the relationship between the average connectedness of a genes and the ability of organism to evolve? Has fortunate evolutionary history selected only nets of highly ordered circuit that alone ensure metabolic stability? Or are stability and epigenetics even in a nets of randomly interconnected regulatory circuits to be expected as the consequence of as yet unknown mathematical law? Or are living things more keen to precisely programs automata selected by evolution or to randomly assemble automata? If you look at a system with n nodes and k connection and replace all nodes with a bulbs uh, and think about the connection as wires, then if the number of the connection is large enough, then we expect the system show chaotic behavior. Uh, so the bulbs keep twinkling chaotically. If k is small, then um, we expect frozen or periodic behavior. So some of the bulbs uh, flip on and off, but most soon stop. Um, and if k is um, not small enough and not large enough, then we expect a complex behavior. Complex patterns appear. For example, in the bulb example, a twinkling Iceland of stability develop, but the, the shape of them at their border is changing. A network that is frozen, either solid or chaotic, cannot transmit information, and thus cannot adopt. Gene regulatory networks of living cells are believed to exhibit phase transition behavior on the border between the frozen and chaotic phases. Kaufman has shown that if k equals 2 to a connection per node and p equals 0 0.5, then the statistical features of random Boolean networks match the characteristic of living cell, where number of attractors represent number of cell types, and the length of attractors represent cell cycle time, approximately. When we study a system, our motivation is usually a search for causal relations. Although in everyday life, we frequently make causal statements, such as, I couldn't get up on time this morning because I was up late last night, in general, we cannot see causal relations, but can only infer their existence. Our current system theory, including all that is taken from physics or physical science, deals exclusively with simple systems or mechanisms, while complex and simple systems are disjoint categories. Von Neumann taught that a critical level of system size would trigger the onset of complexity but it has been shown that the complexity is more a function of a system qualities rather than size. Complex systems requires that all aspects of them be encoded in order to be more completely understood. And this is not possible only using traditional parameter dependent modeling, you know, as we, uh, we do when we are trying to infer the network inference. We, we make assumption always, and we have a set of hyperparameters which we always need to tune based on the set of data which we have or based on the expert knowledge. The word of simple mechanism is a surrogate word created by traditional science, while the real word is complex and a new view is needed. And this is what we are trying to do at Algorithmic Dynamics Lab, um, constructing this new view. Uh, you are going to hear more about it throughout the rest of the course.